Hey guys, welcome to section 3.6. In this section, we'll talk about parallel and perpendicular lines. Let's get started. So the very first thing and perhaps the most important topic uh, or the most important idea that you should remember from this section is that parallel lines have the same slope. Similarly, something equally important for perpendicular lines is that they have negative inverse slopes of each other. And I'll explain what this means uh, in a couple of examples in the future. But let's say we consider the simple example, y equals 3x plus 4. This is in slope intercept form already. Hopefully you recognize this as y equals mx plus b. So m in this case is 3. So we know that the slope of this line that we're given is 3. So the slope of a line that is parallel to this one would also be 3 because parallel lines have the same slope. So if there's a new line, say y equals 3x plus 7, the slope of both those lines would be the same, and as a result, they will be parallel to each other. Now, if we're talking about perpendicular lines, on the other hand, the line that's perpendicular to this one will have a negative inverse slope of this. So there's two, I guess, actions that are needed. Negative implies that you have to change the sign on the number. Negative does not mean that the result is always negative. So if you were to take this positive number and multiply it by a negative, it would become a negative. And if this had been a negative 3 to begin with, when you were to, if you were to multiply that by a negative, you would end up getting a positive. So the negative portion of negative inverse implies that whatever this sign is originally, whatever the sign of this number is, you have to change it. So if it's positive to begin with, it turns into a negative. If it's a negative to begin with, it turns into a positive. And then the inverse portion implies that you have to flip the number. So if the number is 3 to begin with, you can imagine that it being 3 over 1. So if you were to flip the 3 over 1, it would turn into 1 over 3. So there's always two actions. Please remember this. The first is to change the sign, and the second is to flip the number. So here are a couple of examples, just so you kind of get used to it, that these are all lines that are parallel to this one, y equals 2 over 7x minus 11. The reason why all of these are parallel, hopefully you see 2 over 7, 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 2 over 7. The slope of all these lines is 2 over 7, and because that's the same as the slope of this line, we can say that all seven of these lines are parallel to this one. And not only that, they're all parallel to each other. So this line is parallel to this one because they have the same slope. This line is parallel to this one because they have the same slope. This line is parallel to this one because they have the same slope. So again, it's not just that two lines are parallel. Any lines that are parallel to each other must have the same slope. Lines that are perpendicular to each other need to have negative inverse slopes of each other. So if the slope of this line, because it's already in slope intercept form, we can say is negative 4 over 3, y equals mx plus b. The slope of this line is negative 4 over 3. So because the, the number or the slope is negative already, when we multiply it by a negative or when we flip the sign, it's going to become positive. So the slope of a new line that's perpendicular to this one would need to be positive. And then the second thing is that we need to flip this fraction. So 4 over 3 will turn into 3 over 4. So all of these lines, hopefully you recognize, are perpendicular to this line because they all have negative inverse slopes of each other. Now, also notice that all of these lines individually are parallel to each other because they have the same slope. But all of them are perpendicular to this one. So please make sure you follow that and you understand that. Spend some time with this. It's very, very simple questions, but students uh, tend not to understand it deeply enough to be able to answer questions that are very simple, but students overcomplicate things. And a common com complaint or a concern is that they say that they're confused. It's because they don't understand the matter deeply enough. So please pause the video. Make sure you understand this before you move on. So a couple of things to remember, 
The equation must be in slope intercept or point slope form before we can determine the slope of the line. So if the equation is not in point slope or slope intercept form, you cannot just simply look at it and say, oh, it's the coefficient of x. We can only say that if the equation is in slope intercept or point slope form. Uh, also, the slope of horizontal lines is always zero. Similarly, the slope of vertical lines is undefined. Also, we uh, th this is somewhat intuitive. If not, maybe draw a few horizontal lines and see that they're parallel to each other. So all horizontal lines are going to be parallel to other horizontal lines. So if you were to draw this line, that's a horizontal line, and another horizontal line, both of them will be parallel because the slope of all horizontal lines is zero. And if two lines have the same slope, well, they must be parallel to each other. And this should also make sense that if you have two vertical lines, well, they're also parallel to each other. So if you have a vertical line right here and you have another vertical line right here, well, the slope of both of these lines is undefined. And if the slopes are the same, they must be parallel to each other. Now this one is, is a little more nuanced. If you have a horizontal line, they're always going to be perpendicular to vertical lines. So think about the xy plane. The x-axis is a horizontal line, and the y-axis is a vertical line, and they're perpendicular to each other. Now this is, uh, these are last two items on things that we did in the past. The equation of all horizontal lines is always going to be y equals the, the y-coordinate co of the point that the line passes through, or y equals a number. And the number always comes from the y-coordinate that the line is passing through. The equation of all vertical lines, on the other hand, is going to be x equals the constant. And the constant, again, is the x-coordinate that the line passes through. So here are a couple of examples. So let's say the question says to graph the equation of the line that passes through this point, negative 1 comma negative 2, and we want it to be perpendicular to 3x plus 4y equals 8. So if it's perpendicular, we can figure out something about the slope of the new line. Well, in order to do that, we would need to figure out what the slope of this line is. And since this is not in point slope or slope intercept form, what I would need to do is first turn it into one of those two forms to figure out what the slope is. So I can write down the equation again, 3x plus 4y equals 8. I just copy this over. And I can subtract the 3x over to the other side because on the left-hand side, it's being added. So when I pick this up and move it over to the right-hand side, it becomes a subtraction. So I'm left with 4y equals negative 3x plus 8. And at this stage, in order to get this y by itself, I can divide this 4 on every single term. So if I divide 4y by 4, the 4s will cancel. If I divide negative 3x by 4, I'll get negative 3 over 4x. And if I divide 8 by 4, I'll get 8 over 4. Now, negative 3 over 4 doesn't really simplify, so I just wrote it again. 8 over 4, on the other hand, is 2. So the equation of this was the equation of a line in standard form. Again, remember, the variables are on the same side, and the constant is by itself on the other side. What we did by doing this is changed from standard form to slope intercept form. The y is by itself, and it's in the form y equals mx plus b. So simplified, it looks like this. Now remember, we said that the new line is perpendicular. So if the slope of the old line is negative 3 over 4, perpendicular implies that we have to do negative inverses. So if it's already negative, the slope of the new line has to be positive, and we have to flip this number. So 3 over 4 flips to 4 over 3. So let's see what we have so far. We know that we need to find the graph of a line that passes through negative 1 comma negative 2. So the first thing we can do is graph that. Negative 1 on the x-axis, 2 down on the y-axis. So it, the first point on the line is right there. We know that because we're told that the line passes through this point. Not only that, from this line, we figured out that the slope of this line was negative 3 over 4, and the new line is perpendicular to this old one. 
Well, if it's perpendicular, the slope must be a negative inverse, and we found the slope of this new line to be 4 thirds. So if I have a point on the line, and I know what my slope is, I can simply use rise over run, stuff that we did in section 3.3, .3, I believe, on the slope intercept form, to graph the equation of the line. So from this point, I can go up by four units. So one, two, three, four. And then from here, I can go to the right by three units because the denominator is three. So one, two, three. So this is going to be my second point. And if I were to connect these two dots, I would get the equation of a line. Just as a friendly reminder, these two dots are solutions because they're on the line. This line is made up of an infinite number of solutions. And the slope of this line is m equals 4 thirds. Now notice the question set to graph the equation of the line that passes through this point and is perpendicular to this line. It did not ask us to find the equation of that new line. It simply said graph it. So here's where reading the question carefully is going to be very important because you want to know what specifically you're being asked to do. Are you being asked to graph an equation or graph a line? Or are you being asked to find the equation itself and then graph or maybe not even graph it at all? So make sure you read the question very carefully. Make sure you understand it before you start so trying to solve it or before you start solving it. So here's, uh, I guess, the opposite of what I was asking about. In this case, I asked you to graph it. Here the question states to find the equation of the line that passes through this point. I figured I'd throw some fractions at you guys so you know how to deal with them. That is perpendicular to this line. Now again, this line is in standard form. So if we want to know something about the line being perpendicular, I cannot find the slope using this form. The line needs to be in either point slope form or slope intercept. Slope intercept is the easiest one to convert to, so that's what I'm going to use again. So here's a copy of the line again, I just copied it over. Now, in order to get y by itself, I need to get rid of this term. So 2 over 3x is being added on the left-hand side. So if I were to pick this whole term up and move it to the right-hand side, it's going to get subtracted. So 2x over 3 gets a minus sign in front of it, and then the plus 7 just comes down. We didn't, cha we didn't change the location of that point. And then here we see that there's a 3 as a coefficient of y, and we need to get rid of this. So what we can do at this stage is divide every single term by 3, and that'll cancel this 3 out, so we're left with just y. The negative 2 over 3x, we put a 3 on the bottom, and then plus the 7, we divided that by 3 as well. Notice that 3 times 3 is 9, so that's what we get here. So negative 2 over 9x plus the 7 thirds just stays. Now we're doing all this to find the slope of this line, and the slope of this line turns out to be negative 2 over 9. We can see right here, it's in slope-intercept form, and in slope-intercept form, the coefficient of x is the slope. Now, again, remember that the question had said to find the equation of a perpendicular line. Now, if this question had said parallel instead, the slope of the parallel line would be the same as this, would just be negative 2 over 9. But however, since the question says to find the slope of a perpendicular line, we have to find the negative inverse of this number. So because this is already negative, the slope of the perpendicular line must be positive. It has to have the changed uh, sign. And the 2 over 9 flips to 9 over 2. So what we can determine from here is that the slope of the perpendicular line, the new line that we're looking for, has to be 9 over 2. Now, notice that I never told you what form I wanted the answer in. So here I simply said find the equation of the line passing through this point that is perpendicular to this line. Now in the homework packet or in the daily prep, I did specify which form I wanted the answers in. But here, since I didn't tell you, I essentially answered the question in all three forms just as a review or as a reminder of how we had done these questions in the past. So basically, or essentially this question really boils down to the fact that we have a given point, 5 comma negative 4 over 3, and we're given a slope, 9 over 2. Now, between these two, 
Finding the point slope form is really quite easy. We can just do y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. y is just here, minus a negative 4 thirds. A negative times a negative would make it a positive 4 thirds, equals m, which is 9 halves from the previous slide, times the quantity x minus x1, which happens to be 5. And that's it. If the question asks for you to find the equation in point slope form, this is done. All too often, especially in my own section, students say, well, do you not want us to solve the equation? There is nothing to solve. If the question states that they want the answer in point slope form, this is the answer in point slope form. Don't go any further. Now, what happens if the question had asked for the answer in slope intercept form? Well, we can start with slope intercept form, just like we did with point slope form. We can start with y equals mx plus b. The y coordinate is negative 4 thirds, so I can substitute that there. m we know is 9 halves, so that goes there. X, the x coordinate is 5, so we enter that there. And then b is what we always have to solve for whenever we use the slope intercept form. Not always, but most of the time, b is what's missing. We're usually given this, uh, the slope and the coordinates of the point. So cleaning this up a little bit, negative 4 thirds just comes down. 9 times 5 is 45. So I get 45 over 2 plus b. Now notice that here I have a fraction with a 3 in the denominator and a 2 in the denominator. Now if I wanted to clear these fractions, I would multiply the entire equation by 3 to get rid of this 3 in the denominator, but I would also need to then multiply by 2 to get rid of the 2 in the denominator. So I could save time, and hopefully you guys see this at this stage because we've, doing it, we've been doing it for quite a while. 3 times 2 gives us 6. Well, what happens if we multiply every single term of the equation by 6? Well, the 3 will go into the 6 twice, so the negative 4 comes down, 3 goes into 6 twice, so I put a 2 there. 2 goes into 6 3 times, so I put a 3 here, and the 45 just comes along for the ride. And then there is nothing to cancel here, so the 6b just stays as 6b. Negative 4 times 2 is 8, or rather, negative 8. 45 times 3 is 135, plus 6b. Now, in order to solve for b, I need to get rid of a couple of these things. So this 135 is currently being added because there's a plus sign in front of it. So if I were to pick it up and move it over to the left-hand side, it would turn into a subtraction because that's the inverse operation, leaving behind just negative 8 minus 135 equals 6b. Negative 8 minus 135 gives me negative 143, and I still have a 6b on the other side. Here, hopefully you recognize that the operation between 6 and b is multiplication. So in order to get rid of the 6, we can divide it over to the other side, giving negative 143 over 6 equals b. Now once we know what m is, that was given to us in the problem, and we know what b is, we figured out b using the slope-intercept form to be negative 143 over 6. What we can do is we can write the equation of a straight line in slope-intercept form. So it would be y equals, instead of m, we replace it with 9 over 2, x minus this term, 143 over 6. Now hopefully you remember, but just as a review, if you were to simplify this equation and solve for y, you would end up getting y equals 9 halves x minus 143 over 6. In fact, I'm going to leave that to you as an exercise to see if instead of starting with slope-intercept form, what could we have done to just simplify this directly and turn it into this? Lastly, what happens if the question says to give the answer in standard form? Well, that one's not too bad. We can pick right off from the slope-intercept form, and we had y equals 9 halves x minus 143 over 6. Again, we recognize that in order to get rid of this 2 on the bottom, I would need to multiply all three terms by 2. However, what happens if I multiply all three terms by 6? I could cancel the 6 out, obviously, but the 2 would go into the 6 as well, thereby canceling it out. So 6 times y would just be 6y. 
6 times 9 over 2x, the 2 would go into the 6 3 times, so that's where this 3 came from, and the 6y just came along for the ride. And then once the 2 cancels out, it turns into this 3, and the 9x just comes along. Here, the 6 and the 6 cancel, so the negative 143 gets brought over. Now we can simplify this. 3 times 9 is 27. So we're left with 6y equals 27x minus 143. These two terms, the flanks, are just coming down. All we're doing is just simplifying this. Now hopefully you remember that standard form requires that all variables be on the same side and a constant be on the other side. So in order to get this 27x on the same side as the 6y, we see that the sign in front of it is a plus, so it's being added on this side. So if I were to pick it up and move it over to the other side, it would become a subtraction. So we finally get 6y minus 27x equals one, negative 143. And that's it. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Have a nice evening.